The ocean is a big place, a huge expanse of water teeming with life. For large ocean predators like sharks, on the lookout for the next meal, this watery wonderland can surely provide plenty of food to go around. But along the urbanised coast of southeast Queensland, the ocean has changed. With fishing, tourism, development and transportation booming, it has become a tough place for these secretive hunters. This is the story of the scalloped hammerhead shark. Today we're on an adventure out into the beautiful Moreton Bay Marine Park, a 3,500 square kilometre expanse of subtropical protected waters off the coast of Brisbane. We are joining Johan Gustafsson from Griffith University to learn more about the elusive scalloped hammerhead shark. Hi, I'm Johan Gustafsson from Griffith University on the Gold Coast. I am a marine ecologist. I specialise in sharks, particularly scalloped hammerheads. This morning we are at uh, Morton Bay Marine Park. Today we're going to go over to Peel Island and we're going to try to catch some scalp hammerheads. The hammerhead shark, specifically the scalp hammerhead, grows up to about three metres. They're the most flexible shark. It's the only shark actually that can turn on a dime. Their skin is covered in denticles. Uh, these are like scales or teeth-like scales that face backwards and that's for hydrodynamics. That's why when you rub a shark it's very, very smooth if you go head to tail but if you go tail to head it will cut your skin. The hammerhead shark has the most sensory systems out of all the sharks, over 600 sensors per side, putting its head. It's formed pretty much like a hammer, and what it does is it uses those sensors underneath that hammer to scour the seafloor, looking for hidden prey like stingrays, and then it'll pin them down with its hammer, and then it'll start to uh, undertake feeding. The habitats of the hammerhead shark pretty much include coastal environments as well as embayments. It's the only shark that actually moves in schools. Uh, this is due to the heightened neurological development of the hammerhead shark over other sharks where they literally hang out in groups just to socialise, just to be as they are. And they'll do this as they migrate up and down the coastlines, basically from Sydney up to the tropical waters of Australia. They are found in Moreton Bay and other bays, uh, especially in the summertime where they'll actually come in to lay their pups. And as the water starts to cool down, they'll start to leave. One thing with the hammerheads as well, so they'll always come back to the place that they were born in. So this is something that's new that we're starting to discover and hopefully with the tagging uh, equipment that we do, will start to actually prove that. So the hammerhead shark in Australia has been listed as an endangered species actually globally. Um, same with the great hammerhead and in New South Wales of Australia it's actually protected species but not so much in Queensland. So this is something that we're also trying to rectify. For a few reasons they are the most advanced shark but it's, they're also the most sensitive shark. So they tend to die from exhaustion. So when they're caught they need to swim or move forward in order to breathe. When they become stressed or they become hunted or stopped, they really uh, overreact in a way that they hit exhaustion quite fast. Plus the shape of their head, they get caught in nets really, really often. And when they get caught in those nets, they'll start to roll and they'll wrap themselves up into that net, then they literally can't breathe. Other factors uh, affecting the population and abundance is plastic debris, as well as pesticides and other poisons that are lurking out through our waste. So my research is involved by tagging hammerhead sharks with GPS transmitters. So we don't really know much about hammerhead sharks in Australia. So what we're going to try and do is tag multiple adult sharks to literally follow where they go throughout the one yearly cycle. We also are looking into human impact driving their decline worldwide. So hopefully we can put this into reverse. We also need to spread the word that these sharks are not dangerous to swim with. They have smaller mouths than normal sharks, except for the 6.5 meter greater hammerhead. But there's been literally one case of an incident which was non-fatal in over 100 years. So how can you help to preserve hammerheads and prevent them from declining further? One is to spread the word that they are sensitive and we need to keep them. They are an apex predator for the marine areas. Stop littering any plastics in the oceans. Sharks do mistake in these for jellies or turtles and other marine animals that they eat. So that stays within their guts and it clogs them so they will actually die by starvation. Second of all, when you're fishing and you do manage to capture a hammerhead, if it's a small one, put it back straight away. Try not to keep them out of the water to take too many photographs as they need to move to breathe and they need oxygen. So they need to breathe through the water. If you catch an adult, please don't take it out of the water. Take any videos or photos while it's in there, release the hook and keep it moving for at least five minutes before you release it back on its own. With this sort of uh, practices in mind, we might be able to preserve them in recreational fishing. Bearing all of this information in mind, you and I can both save the scalp hammerhead from further declining, as well as other hammerhead species. You can follow me on Instagram or social media. I'm Dr. Underscore Hammerhead, and we give a lot of talks and presentations as well on sharks.